Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ali. Welcome back to my world of stocks. So SoFi stock just dropped pretty hard on earnings this week, despite what I feel was actually a pretty strong report. And so in today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys three reasons why I'm choosing to buy SoFi stock myself on the dip. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So reason number one. Now, I just don't think that earnings were nearly bad enough to cause this much of a drop. In fact, it mostly just had to do with guidance, as SoFi actually beat earnings on both the top and bottom line for the first quarter, but unfortunately guided a little lower than what analysts were hoping for in the upcoming second quarter, as they gave an outlook for revenue and net income of up to $565 million and $10 million respectively, while analysts wanted to see something closer to $580 million and $13.9 million instead. And as a result, the stock fell over 10% during the day leaving it now down over a quarter of its entire value so far this year, while also being down over 70% from its high. That's a huge crash there. But in my opinion, most of this is just Wall Street being really greedy and too short-sighted to really see how well this company is actually doing and performing, which leads me to reason number two, that there were not only way more pros in the quarter worth paying attention to, but also the fact that SoFi actually rose guidance for the full year. Now, first of all, like I said before, this quarter was an actual beat with also an EPS profit, which is super important for them since they're not usually profitable, having actually reported a loss of five cents the year before on EPS. And it was also a 100% beat there as well versus analyst estimates. So that's pretty good. You know, that's a pretty big positive. Now, revenue in the quarter also rose 26% year over year, beating estimates there too, with their most important growth segments, the financial services and the tech platform, surging by 50 54% combined to now making up a record 42% of the company's entire revenue, which they're also guiding to be as much as 50% this year. So making up half of their sales. And that's huge guys, because you really want services and tech to be as large of a portion of their business as possible long-term versus just lending. It's what can be more, I would say a little bit more reliable, especially given the macroeconomic conditions. But you know, there is also a lot of growth potential there. It can also be very disruptive with tech and it can also be pretty high margin too with services. It can be less capital intensive as maybe lending. So there's a lot of positives there to have a more diversified business. And that's what you're starting to see here with lending now not making up such a dominant position compared to everything else. Now everything else is start, starting to take a little bit of a bigger share as well and everything's getting balanced out a bit. And I love to see that. And that was one thing that I was looking for in the report and it looks like that's gonna continue moving forward as well. But on top of that, we also had new members rising by 44%, now totaling more than 8 million, which shows continued strength for the company. And it also shows that their services are in high demand among consumers. That's a big positive to see there. And as a result, you know, everyone is freaking out about slightly lower Q2 guidance. Well, for the full year, which in my opinion is way more important, well, SoFi actually rose their guidance for the full year. So why aren't investors paying attention to that instead? It's because really everyone is just so damn short-sighted. They like to be really short-term traders rather than long-term investors. But meanwhile, you know, SoFi, they actually rose their guidance for both sales and profits to higher levels than they had previously forecasted. You can see that right here. Now, mind you, this is probably during one of the worst macroeconomic conditions out there, especially for a finance company. And yet they're actually starting to turn a profit now their users are growing and they're even expecting the full year to be better than previously expected so if anything the stock should be climbing by double digits not crashing but again it's just that short-sighted kind of mentality by wall street of uh, really caring more about this one immediate quarter while refusing to look at the entire picture. And that's what's gonna actually bring us to reason number three, which is the future potential for them long-term that really short-term traders on Wall Street couldn't care less about. Now, really the biggest reason why I choose to invest in SoFi myself as a long-term investor is because the entire banking and financial services model of the past really does need to be revamped. Everything is turning more digital by the day and I just don't think most people need to go into a physical branch as often as before to get basic tasks done. And sure, many banks are now offering more robust online platforms, which is great. And I still continue to invest in some banks myself too. I like to 
have the exposure and the diversity and all that. But in my opinion, nobody does a better job of bringing everything together into one very simple, but still very robust and easy to use online platform better than SoFi. Whether it's investing, student loans, like other types of loans, mortgages, banking, uh, savings, refinancing, insurance, credit cards, whatever it is, you can usually get most of it done right there in one place on SoFi and it's super fast and streamlined and convenient. And I actually love to use it myself too. But if it wasn't, a, you don't have to take my word for it. If it wasn't a popular choice among consumers that is like really disrupting the industry, then we wouldn't see their user counts soar by such large amounts every single quarter, adding another more than half a million members just in the last quarter alone. Which by the way, having so many users under one roof, regardless of what the specific product they're using is, well, it allows SoFi to cross sell multiple products to the same users, which is why their products growth is so high as well, adding almost a million more products last quarter as it benefits from a bit of snowball effect like compounding growth. It's, it's all really good for them. Now, a prime example of that was when they acquired the banking and payments platform Galileo, which added many millions of new users under the roof too to uh, cross sell even more to them as well. And by the way, there too, they're now seeing a big recovery and reacceleration of growth on that as well, which continued in this last quarter. And that was a very big positive to see there too, because it was kind of um, struggling a little bit recently, but now it looks like it's reaccelerating. So that's good news. Now, keep in mind that in the past, SoFi did feel much of their growth by acquiring other companies and platforms like they did with Galileo, which in turn hurt their profitability and for a long time caused them to generate heavy losses. But what we've seen now is two profitable quarters in a row of gap net income profits, which SoFi says that we can expect to see in every quarter moving forward too. And that's huge because the stock already trades, in my opinion, at a pretty attractive valuation based on sales with a PS of less than three, which is lower than most of its peers. But I believe that as their profitability rapidly scales up, the valuation will get even more attractive when it's based on profits. For example, analysts are now projecting close to 200% EPS growth on average over the next five years. And when you look at their projected EPS for 2026, well, it's expected to grow to 50 cents a share. So if you divide that from today's stock price, it translates to a PE ratio of only 14. Even if that's you know still two years away, I think that's dirt cheap for a fintech disruptor like this that has gigantic room for growth in the future. In fact, many analysts project the fintech market to reach $1.5 trillion by 2030 and the lending market to surpass 15 trillion by 2033. I'm not saying SoFi will dominate these markets, but considering that they only did 2 billion in sales in all of last year, the growth opportunities here are pretty massive. Again, especially for a still relatively small, but up and coming disruptor like this. Cause even if they can manage to capture just like a fractional piece of those markets, I still think that that would translate to substantial gains for both the company and the stock. So in conclusion, this is why I still have pretty high hopes for SoFi. I think the stock is beaten down at the moment because really Wall Street is more focused on the short-term issues rather than the long-term opportunities. And granted, the economy is pretty trash right now. And if we go into a deep recession, I do think SoFi, like most other stocks in the market, would get heavily punished, especially for a fintech like this. You know, if the economy crashes and people stop using their services or struggle to make payments, other issues arise like that, then we could actually see their profits dip back down into negative territory. And I think that would start to dominate all the headlines. The stock would start crashing and all the negativity would just kind of start snowballing at that point, which to be fair is probably the reason why Wall Street is so concerned about anything here even in the short term, like the upcoming quarter, and they're being so sensitive on the stock at the moment. And I do think that all of that is something to keep in mind. Uh, again, the, the environment is not very favorable to a company like this. And that's especially the case if we go into a recession. So, um, you know, I've always called SoFi a high risk category type of stock, and I still believe that it re remains one today, even if they are starting to become profitable. Usually I reserve calling a stock very high risk or speculative if, if they're not profitable. Now SoFi is starting to turn a profit. So it's a little less risky than before and I'm starting to feel a little more confident, but given the macro environment, I, you know, I'm you still not too confident in SoFi and I still try to limit my position to a smaller one. But 
Uh, I would also say that as a long-term minded investor with, uh, you know, I think I have a pretty strong stomach that can withstand a lot of volatility in the market. And I only ever see dips and crashes as more buying opportunities rather than something to fear or be worried about. Well, because of that, I am willing to take a chance on a bright up and comer like SoFi. And that's why I'm picking up shares on any dips. And that's especially the case on this one too. So I'm gonna continue to do that. And if I continue to see more dips, I'll probably pick up more. But I'd love to hear what you all think about this whole situation. Do you think SoFi stock is a buy right now? Have you been picking up any shares yourself? Or do you think that it is uh, just too risky of a stock right now, especially given the environment that we're in, and so you're avoiding it at the moment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them down below in the comment section, but thanks again for stopping by, my friends. Hope you enjoyed this quick update on SoFi stock, and we'll catch you in the next one. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.